Um, hominid used to mean half human, unevolved, ape men, but we realized that being not fully evolved doesn't make sense because evolution never completely stops. Uh, we also realized that it didn't make sense to classify anything paraphyletically, meaning that it doesn't make sense to say that this clay includes all of these ancestors and maybe these, but not these. A clade is a monophyletic taxon, meaning that it includes all of its subsequently subdivided subsets. Um, and mammalia, or theria, is an excellent example of a monophyletic clade. Whether you're talking about panthers or people, we're all mammals, and we always will be. The same goes with monotremes and marsupials. Whales did not stop being mammals and become fish. They're still mammals, even if they don't look like it anymore. And I need to explain this too. Um, even if whales were to lose some diagnostic trait of mammalia, like mammaries, for example, they would still be mammals, and still would be no matter how much more they change over millions of years from now, because modern systematic classification isn't dependent on the traits or the characters that you currently possess. It's based on your evident phylogeny. It's based on evolution. That's why whales and snakes are still considered tetrapods, even though they don't have four legs anymore. We know that their ancestors did have legs and that they retain vestiges of those limbs. Now, a paraphyletic taxon uh, is one that includes only some of its ancestors and preferentially excludes certain others according to some convention, uh, arbitrary convention, best questioned and corrected. A good example of that is lizards. Uh, the lizard is a paraphyletic term meaning all descendants of the order Squamata, except snakes. <laughs> Why not snakes? We know that snakes evolved from lizards, and they are definitely part of that subset, so why does it stop being a, a lizard the moment it becomes a snake? It's just a convention. An indefensible mindset that we've fallen into and have never corrected. In other words, tradition. <laughs> Two more examples of that are fish and reptiles. The definition for reptile is really well known. It's a cold-blooded, egg-laying, clawed uh, tetrapod. Except, and by this definition, many of our ancestors were once reptiles. Except that not all reptiles are cold-blooded. Not all of them have scales, or claws, or even arms and legs. Some of them give birth blind, and some of them led to warm-blooded descendants like mammals and dinosaurs. If you're going to use the word reptile cladistically accurately, it has to be synonymous with the word diapsid or member of diapsida, in which case none of our ancestors were ever reptiles. Fish is another term that doesn't have any applicable definition that is consistent for all things that are universally accepted as fish. Uh, some of them have fins instead of, or have legs instead of fins, some of them are warm blooded, some don't have scales or lack fins on their tails. And there are some things that are very much like fish, but aren't fish, yet they still have gills. So the only way the word fish would be taxonomically accurate or consistent is if it were synonymous with the word chordate. However, we are all chordates. And I'm betting at least some of you will argue that we are not fish. Yeah. The last good example of a paraphyletic taxon is wolves. Dogs descend from wolves, but dogs are not considered wolves. Conversely, the ancestors of wolves are considered dogs, but not the same as domestic dogs, they're definitely different. And this is where one of the most notable contributions to science that Linnaeus ever made gets thrown under the bus. Uh, binomial nomenclature, Homo sapiens, Panthera pardus, naming the species by the genus name first. Oh, <laughs> I can tell I'm not used to this type of My apologies. Uh, wolves are Canis lupus. Domestic dogs are traditionally Canis familiaris. But it shouldn't be that way. Because the, uh, the dogs didn't diverge at the genus level. They diverged at the species level from wolves. So the proper name for domestic dogs should be Canis lupus familiaris. And it would get even worse if some breed of dogs were to, to, to develop its own genetically distinct 
breed or species, because then you might have Canis lupus familiaris dachshund. And a polyphyletic taxon is one you almost never hear about. Seriously, how does this come up in conversation? Uh, monkeys are an excellent example of a polyphyletic taxon because most scientists still consider it fashionable to say that old world monkeys and new world monkeys did not evolve from a common ancestor that was a monkey itself. Why? Because the law of monophyletic variation would mean that anything that descends from a monkey is still a monkey. That means apes would be monkeys, and so would we be, since we are apes also. <clears throat> I argue that just as humans evolved from apes, apes evolved from monkeys. Circapithecidae, for those of you who know what that word means, are not the only old world monkey group. They and hominoidia, the apes, share a common ancestor in a now extinct paraphyletic grouping called Propliopithecoidea and previously Parapithecidae, which even the New World monkeys are descended from. So that would mean that we and the other apes are really large, tailless, old world catarine monkeys right now. Not come from monkeys, not be like monkeys. We are monkeys. That's not a popular idea. <laughs> it's not widely accepted, to be sure, but it is defensively accurate nonetheless. I have another video that explains that in more detail if you're interested. The name Pongo used to be essentially all living apes except people. And this is the way it always was since the days of the names. But having any grouping that says all of these type things except us is essentially a Freudian admission that we are already aware that we are one of them. And now that we've come to terms with that and can finally admit it, then Pongo has been redefined. It is now a genus applicable to orangutans and their relatives, Sivapithecus, that can't speak, Sivapithecus, Ramapithecus, or Gigantopithecus, and so on. They are a genera in the family of great apes, along with Pan for Ibanogos and chimpanzees, and the different types of gorillas, and different types of humans, extant and extinct. And of course, we know of more extinct species than there are current ones, and that's probably true of every clade, in fact. The closer you get to the point of evolutionary divergence, the more similar, for any two taxonomic groups, the more similar those two groups will appear to be, especially in their infancy. And this is an interesting trait. If you want to see how closely related some things are when you look at the infants of both groups, they're going to look more alike than the adults do. It again follows like a, like a taxonomic trait. Now, the earliest primates looked a lot like the earliest carnivores. And these two groups drifted apart and they're actually quite far apart, but they, just for purposes of illustration, and each diversified in their own way. But at some level, they're both still mammals. They're both still the same kind. And they share all the parent categories from that, for, that point on. So no matter how you view it, they share common ancestry. Okay. So despite the claims of creationists, we've seen that Linnaeus had already glimpsed the tree of life without any knowledge or even suspicion of evolution. Uh, we have since found many, many more clades in this and myriad other lineages, and 21st century genomics has now confirmed all this. So we've established a twin nested hierarchy. Note that we've determined all this without any reference to fossil forms so far. And that's important when this topic comes up in conversation with the creationists. It's as the previous speaker mentioned, we don't even need the fossils to establish this. And indeed, this was established before we knew what the fossils were or what their significance was. When we found out the significance of the fossil finds, the situation from the creationist perspective became exponentially worse. <laughs> 